Thank you very much to Jen. I think it was very gracious of her to be my opening act. Uh, her merch table is in the back. You can get an album. Um, I'm Adam Ronsley. I'm a reporter at Rolling Stone. Um, yes, Rolling Stone does cyber. No, I cannot get you Harry Styles tickets. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you today about is an interesting spin on phishing. I'm used to seeing phishing trying to uh, collect intelligence on an adversary. Uh, what I don't see that much of um, is trying to collect intelligence on your own team. Um, and that's what I found here. Um, and I'm just going to set the scene for you a little bit. Um, Iran has been taking a series of L's for the past 10 years. Um, if you look at their encounter intelligence um, uh, 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 failures, they are many and they are particularly public. Um, in, I'd say the most uh, high profile of them would be uh, in 2020. Uh, obviously, we, uh, the US assassinated Qasem Soleimani. The US assassinated him after being able to track his movements. That's a big no-no. In 2018, um, the Israelis managed to lift a gigantic archive of nuclear secrets with about 100,000 documents right outside their noses um, in Tehran. Um, and you've had the assassination of uh, Mr. Fakhrizadeh, who was the uh, leader of their uh, uh, nuclear program. So what you basically have is a giant series of counterintelligence elts. Um, and this is what I would argue is how they've been, one of the ways they've been trying to deal with it. Uh, so this story starts with a tweet. Um, and Lahav is a reporter at the Jerusalem Post. And one day I got a note saying, hey, um, have you seen this? It's pretty weird. Um, and it's uh, Lahav saying there is a very transparently fake um, uh, a website impersonating her. Um, and a little bit of confirmation bias on my part. I pay attention to a lot of Iranian influence operations. So my assumption at this point was that it was going to be uh, another um, you know, influence operation where they'd created a fake J uh, Jerusalem Post website. They were going to host a fake story. Everybody would have a laugh. It would be over. Next slide. Uh, oh boy. Um, there we go. Um, but what I found when I looked at it um, was that it was connected to a couple of sites. There was also a fake Collegiate Times. But um, what I decided to do was a little bit of infrastructure profiling, um, which I'm sure everybody in this audience who's technical um, can school me on. But um, for the non technical dummies like me uh, at home, uh, what it basically is, is I guess the way I would explain it is, you know, you can put a website together like you can put an outfit together. I'm basic, so I've got a J. Crew jacket on. Um, I've got a J. Crew shirt. I've got uh, Gap jeans. Millions and millions and millions of people have each and every one of these um, uh, uh, bits of clothing. Uh, what infrastructure profiling does is um, you look at, okay, who's wearing all this combination, and you make that haystack smaller. And basically what we were able to do is find a series of behaviorally related websites um, within this mix um, because essentially what they were doing was wearing the you know, website equivalent of a tuxedo with Crocs. Um, so if you look at that combination of uh, name silo registrar, um, I believe Zoho is the mail server, uh, Cloud DNS is the na uh, name server. You get it down from you know a potential each and every one of those uh, uh, you know little bits of infrastructure have millions of customers. You get it down to a pile of 68, and within the 68, um, you see a much smaller pile of websites. And as you can see, these all look like very much fishy kind of websites. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Um, let me see what slide. Um, as you can see, next slide, um, these are all fairly fishy um, and they look like they're impersonating uh, a, a typical series of targets of what, um, uh, uh, next slide, next slide, uh, here we go. Um, you know, this doesn't look like um, disinformation. This doesn't look like, you know, Endless Mayfly is one of their uh, uh, influence operations. Um, and uh, they impersonate fake, they impersonate websites, put up fake stories, stuff like that. Um, this is a little bit of method acting. You don't create fake VPN logins, you don't create fake JIRA logins for this type of stuff on a phishing website. And I managed to get in touch with some of the people um, who, uh, oper who were the targets of these things, and it very quickly became clear that this looked, at least to my mind, like it was another instance of what Mandiant calls distinguished uh, uh, impersonator, which is, 
the uh, Iranians will use a uh, fake website um, and say, we want to have an interview with you. Um, uh, I'm a reporter, I'm an academic, I'm a think tanker, uh, and someone picks up the phone, builds trust with you, instead of like the normal sort of phishing stuff of just an email, um, and they try to set up a video conference with you, you end up clicking on something, they own your computer, yada, 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 it's over. Um, next slide, please. Next slide. Um, so the way we were able to get a hint that this was Iranian, aside from the, you know, vibes in, um, was the fact that some of these domains had overlapped with previously attributed websites um, in the Distinguished Impersonator uh, uh, activity set. Um, as you can see there, uh, had been attributed by CERTF uh, Computer, Computer Emergency Response Team in Farsi uh, to APT35 um, and lots of uh, normal, very Iranian targets there. Next slide. Next slide. Um, but this cluster was a little bit different than the ordinary distinguished impersonator uh, in that a few months after our story on this ran, um, uh, Shimbet came out and said one of the websites in that cluster, the fake Gatestone Institute, uh, had been part of a series of uh, websites that weren't just meant to, um, you know, uh, steal your logins, steal your emails, and steal all your docs, but to <laughs> lure people abroad for kidnap and kill operations, which is a little bit more serious. Next slide. Next slide. Um, and so we got a sense that we were onto something in terms of this sort of website behavioral uh, pattern um, uh, from those phishing sites, but then we got into something a little bit more interesting, which is uh, Wazir Khalima. Um, and this was one of the websites that matches that pattern. As you can see, um, you know, uh, uh, this is an Arabic version, um, and what it's basically saying is it's presenting itself very heavily as a Mossad front company saying, if you have experience working for Hezbollah, uh, working for the Assad regime, intelligence or security, we want to hire you. The nice big GeoCity style flag in the middle uh, leaves very little doubt. We're going to pay you great. We'll help you with consulting. Um, and this seemed really weird to me. Um, so I talked to a few CIA folks. Um, and I was like, is this how the Mossad does business? Um, pretty much knowing the answer. And <laughs> uh, the answer, as you might expect, was hell no. Um, this is pretty sloppy. Um, uh, the Mossad does not ask you to, uh, the Mossad, generally speaking, doesn't need to find you this way. They'll come, you know, if they want you, they'll find you. Um, and uh, generally speaking, they also don't use Telegram for operational <laughs> communications as this one directed you to. Um, and so I, uh, I called up that, uh, uh, that Telegram link and uh, I found an interesting logo in there, VIP Human Solutions. Next slide. The VIP Human Solutions brand, shall we say, um, has been used, hello, uh, uh, had been in use since at least 2017. Um, and it had been in use across a series of different websites. This one is uh, VIP Jobs Global, which had its own Facebook page. Um, uh, this one is catered to uh, Persian-speaking audiences in Iran. It's looking for um, Iranian um, uh, intelligence veterans and making the same pitch. Next slide. There's, uh, there's a good example of what it looks like in Persian, um, saying, you know, information uh, uh, employees are needed, cyber employees are needed. Next slide. Uh, next slide. And one of the ways that they get this website in front of people um, is through the magic of Google Ads. Um, uh, one of the things I found while uh, looking through all these different websites was um, uh, uh, Iranians often being shocked, surprised, and a little bit horrified that this was being advertised to them. Um, and it would be advertised to them in a series of, you know, there's a series of sort of behavioral ticks that would tend to show up when people reported these things because they would tweet out saying, hey, I just got this weird ad, what the hell is this about? Um, and generally speaking, when they were using VPNs, when they were browsing sort of foreign news websites like Foreign Policy, The New York Times, when they were looking for games apps, um, that kind of stuff, they would get served some of these websites uh, via Google Ads um, saying, hey, uh, do you want to make a few bucks? Are you an intelligence veteran? Come talk to us. Next slide. Uh, and the thing about these websites is that, um, and what leads me to, even though the, you know, the web, the evidence linking these to Iran is, is pretty much behavioral at this point, but what's interesting is that 
Um, the Iranian government is well aware of these websites. And um, for those who have spent more than a minute paying attention to how the internet works in Iran, um, it's very filtered. Um, and you can't just go to any website you like. Um, and yet the Iranian government is very well aware of these websites. How do we know they're well aware of these websites? Because they keep telling people about them. Sharif University, which is one of the uh, technically inclined universities in Iran, um, has a web page saying, hey, these things are going around, be careful. Um, uh, news outlets have said, uh, uh, hey, this is, you know, uh, this is the Mossad trying to recruit you, be careful. Um, this gentleman here um, appeared after my story ran um, in a Young Journalist Club uh, video segment. Um, he claims to have been uh, arrested while responding to one of these websites. Um, I'm not sure how reliable um, uh, his testimony is. Um, one thing I can tell you is that, you know, as I was going through all these websites, again, you know, this is not how the Mossad does business. To someone like me, and I would assume to another intelligence veteran, um, or to, to an intelligence veteran, um, uh, that this would be transparently, you know, fake and, and, and silly. But, um, you know, I didn't include these in the slides because I don't want to add insult to injury, but uh, a lot of these websites had YouTube pages, social media pages, and you would be surprised at how many people responded in the comments of that saying, hey, I sent your resume, can you get in touch with me? Hey, um, you know, what does this pay? This type of stuff. And I, I asked a lot of my uh, Iranian American friends and they said that, um, you know, visa fraud is fairly common. A lot of people um, uh, want to leave um, and if you dangle a carrot uh, large enough, a lot of people will take it up. This guy claims to have been um, uh, recruited through it. Uh, I. Prisoner testimonies, um, especially in authoritarian countries, I wouldn't necessarily take them at face value. Um, as you can see, he's got a pretty big neck tattoo that says revenge in Farsi. Um, I'm not sure what the IRGC tattoo regs are. I know in the US this would be a little bit verboten. So um, I can't really comment on the underlying validity of um, uh, his testimony, but what I think this episode does tell us a little bit about is that the Iranian government is very well aware of these websites wants people to know about these websites and is not cracking down on these websites. Um, and we can tell they're not cracking down because, next slide. They're still being advertised. Um, you can see um, uh, that's the Wazayif one with the logo. They still all use the same logo. They still um, use a lot of the same branding. And the thing is they're very much interconnected. Next slide. I made a, a handy little spaghetti matrix in, in true cyber war can, uh, cyber war con, uh, Charlie, it's always sunny fashion. Um, but this is um, uh, a few of the websites that I found. And you can see there's a lot of overlap between the uh, phone numbers that they provided and the telegram um, uh, accounts that they provided. Um, they also, uh, about half of them were on one Google Analytics account that looks like it was just copied from an Israeli website. Um, another uh, uh, cluster of them, I think the bottom cluster there. Um, next slide. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so it's very clear that, and, and you know, it's a mix. It's a mixture of uh, uh, Iranian, or excuse me, Persian and Arabic language ones. You know, going after Assad regime folks, going after uh, Hezbollah military and intelligence folks, and going after Iranian folks. And they're all using, you know, sort of the shared, same shared infrastructure. Next slide. Um, and yeah, here you can see people um, uh, saying, what the hell is this? Next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, and so I decided to do the dopey reporter thing. Um, I made a fake uh, resume. Um, I put a canary token in it and I sent it to them. Um, they are at least smart enough not to have either opened it or have opened it on something that wasn't internet connected because they never got a ping back from that. After my story ran, um, I decided to you know, take off my hat and say, okay, um, who the hell are you? <laughs> um, and as you can see in the last bit, um, I want that on my tombstone. Uh, I have a knack for writing. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, and they're still at it, as you can see here. Uh, the newest incarnation is uh, Optima HR. This, this came up after um, uh, my, uh, my story ran. And they're still promoting Optima HR because Optima, I believe, makes a cameo in that Young Journalist Club um, uh, news segment. 
And the thing to remember about that news segment is there's not a lot of independent media in Iran, and Young Journalist Club is very much state news. So that's very much the Iranian government saying, hey, everyone, pay attention to this. Next slide. Uh, yeah, these are, these are the, some of the new ads. Next slide. You can get, it's a nice little thank you page. After This is after I submitted my resume. They, you know, we'll be in contact with you shortly. <laughs> uh, lovely Uber to Evan Prison. Next slide. Uh, this one's my favorite. Um, so in addition to the sort of boring, hey, do you want a consultant job? We'll give you lots of money, give you a job in, in Israel. Uh, they also created a fake film studio. Um, and I'm sure all of you are familiar with the um, uh, 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 TV show on Apple, Turan. Um, and so what they did was, as I was going through some of the uh, Google Analytics hits on these fake jobs websites, I came across Hatcast. I'm like, what the hell's Hatcast? Next slide. Well, that's what ha Hatcast is. Um, the ruse here, it's you know using the same infrastructure as the fake job sites. We are a network, uh, we are a film studio. We're casting, you know, um, for uh, spy thrillers in Iran. Um, and wouldn't we love it if all of you, and there's a, it's not just in English, there's a Persian speaking version. Wouldn't we love it if all of you Persian speaking Iranian intelligence vets would come work for us in Hollywood and be consultants on our film? Because apparently there's just huge demand for that. Um, and I was like, why Turan? Why a movie studio? What's the hook here? Next slide. Oh, and as you can see, they're, they're, they're advertising them by Google Ads as well. Next slide. I was like, why are they advertising? Like, what's the fixation with Turan? I started getting into it. Um, and the one thing I've learned from reporting on authoritarian countries is um, as ridiculous as the propaganda believes, a lot of, or a lot of, as ridiculous as the propaganda is, a lot of people believe and get high on their own supply. Um, and the Iranian uh, uh, intelligence apparatus is very much convinced that Tehran, the TV show, is Asian bed Um And how do we know about that? Um, uh, that's Rembald Namdar. Um, that's a fake name. Uh, the guy on the right there uh, is, uh, I don't know if he actually exists or if he's just, that's just a fetching uh, uh, picture uh, that they used. But um, a few years ago, um, the uh, uh, Shin Bet arrested four Israeli women um, of Iranian extraction who had been working for this IRGC intelligence officer persona. Um, and what they had, um, what this guy had uh, these women doing is, you know, trying to take pictures of the American consulate in Israel, um, trying to take pictures of the Ministry of Defense, um, trying to wean their way into members of the Knesset, get their kids in IDF intelligence jobs, and also <laughs> um, audition for bit roles in uh, Tehran and spy on its um, uh, uh, filming in Athens. So you know it's very clear that they you know devoted a valuable intelligence asset um, to spying on this TV show. Um, and so from that, I think it's a fair assumption to say that may have informed why they used film studios as a lure for this. Next slide. That's my dog, Bruce. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Did you ever feel like you were just kind of losing it as you got into this block? Like, there's an intelligence agency that's dedicated resources to get into the filming of a television show? Like, did that, did, like, did, how many times did you second guess yourself in that sense? I mean, morbid curiosity is the only thing that gets me out of bed in the morning, so. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I mean, yeah, it, it seemed like I, my, I originally thought this was going to come back as the umpteenth boring Iranian influence operation um, website with one fake article that nobody believed, um, and uh, they're still at it. Uh, okay, two quick questions. One, just gut feeling, do you think IRGC or MOIS or some kind of private enterprise? Um, I'm, I'm willing to say, uh, you know, based on Vibesint, um, that this is probably the Iranian government. Um, uh, anything more narrow than that, you know, maybe IRGC intelligence, just because they tend to be fairly active in this stuff, but I, I, I would hesitate to make a guess in, in full of a room full of people that know way more about this than I. Second, but this just, it seems odd to me, a lot, it seems odd because it's surreal, but it seems odd that 
if your objective is to prevent, say, a nuclear scientist from getting murdered, this is not the kind of operation that is going to potentially get you that kind of experience. So is this really about responding to those counterintelligence cells in sort of a meaningful way, or is this more just about some, you know, little hacker officer that wants to collect some scallops and say, we thought X, Y, Z would be the Israeli spy or something like that. That's a very good question. And so I would say, you know, there's, there's a number of possibilities of what this could be serving is like, number one, um, obviously, like trying to arrest people, you know, have this be your one way ticket to Evan prison. Um, number two could just be, you know, maybe they are just trying to sensitize the population to, um, you know, counterintelligence threats. But as clumsy as it is, and if I'm allowed to minorly curse, um, Ronsley's rule uh, that I've used for analysis uh, over and over again is um, people do dumb shit. Um, and as whatever the smart thing you think uh, would be, I have constantly been humbled by people doing dumb shit. All right. Thanks very much, Adam.